December is bowl season, and we have it right here in Santa Cruz County. And for 56 lucky seniors, this is another opportunity to strap on the helmets and showcase their talent for college recruiters. We have the 5th Annual Lions Senior Bowl right here on CTV Sports. And this time, the best of Santa Cruz County take battle. For the first time, today's Lions Senior Bowls consists of all Santa Cruz County players from 10 different local high schools. And folks, 47 different academic institutions ranging from seven different states will be on hand, anywhere from NCAA Division I all the way down to NAIA, all looking for their next superstar. It's the North battling the South, not only for bragging rights, but one more time for these boys to showcase their talents and end some fabulous football careers on the high school gridiron. I'm Edmund Skirch along with John Pingelli. CTV Sports proudly presents the 5th Annual Lions Senior Bowl live from Carl Conley Stadium on the campus of Cabrillo College. And Johnny, let's jump right into this. The South is led by Coach Joe Gregorio from St. Francis High School. He has five different schools that represent his players on his team. Watsonville High School, Paro Valley, Monta Vista Christian, St. Francis, and Aptos High School. And John, you look at the superb offensive firepower and a stable of runners. Yeah, absolutely. The running game will be emphasized, obviously, with the weather conditions. Look for Aptos's Justin Brettlinger, Watsonville's Mitchell Guzman, and of course, who can forget 21 touchdowns this year, St. Francis's Zach Sacito. On the other side of the field for the North, being coached by Bubba Trumbull from Santa Cruz High School. Again, five schools that represent this team, Santa Cruz High, Harbor High School, Soquel, Scotts Valley, and, and San Lorenzo Valley. And Johnny, again, there's no lack of playmakers on that side of the field either. No, we flip sides and we go to the north and you have SLV's three-headed monster, Nick Lippard, Nick Gorman, and of course, uh, the Zach, Newberry. Zach Newberry, the quarterback. 29 touchdowns between the three. It's going to be a lot of fun. Going to be wet, going to be cold, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And this wouldn't be possible, folks, without our sponsors, without whom we would not be here today. We want to thank CTV Sports, a presentation of Community Television of Santa Cruz County, a nonprofit membership organization serving county residents by providing education and tools to media access. Find out more by visiting communitytv.org. The Lions Senior Bowl is presented by the Santa Cruz Host Lions Club, and all proceeds benefit Lions programs that support hearing and sight conservation, as well as the development of our community's youth. Get involved at santacruzlions.org. This CTV presentation of the Lions Senior Bowl is made possible in part by the general support of the following. Cruz.io Internet, Santa Cruz County's largest independent internet service provider offering high-speed wireless internet, a co-location data center, and flexible workspaces with 10 gigabytes of fiber internet. Details online at cruzio.com. Also by Independent Rentals, offering dependable truck, van, and trailer rentals for over 10 years. Customer satisfaction is very important at Independent Rental, and they prove it every day. On the web, at independentrentalco.com. Coastal RV, serving Santa Cruz County for over 20 years with a professional and friendly staff. Visit them online at coastalrvservice.net. Coastal RV, we come to you. Penzi, we have football weather here today. Folks, strap it on. This is going to be a great opportunity for these seniors one more time. I'll Hit the gridiron, start hitting some helmets. Let's do it. We'll be back right after this with starting lineups and the kickoff. Welcome back everyone, CTV Sports presenting the 5th Annual Lions Senior Bowl. We are here at Carl Conley Stadium on the campus of Cabrillo College and I'm Edmund Scourge along with John Pingelli. It's a pleasure to have you all today. Johnny, the season continues. The, we thought we were done with football, but no. CTV Sports, Lions Bowl comes back. We get to watch these guys once again. You and I have had the opportunity to see these kids play throughout the year. What a great opportunity to see them one more time. I can't say enough for the people who decided to bring this thing back, and we'll get to our sponsors later, Edmund. But looking at this this game today, if you're a senior, you thought it was over with when this, your regular season and playoffs ended, but you get one more shot. You get one more shot today, and this is going to be a great opportunity for Gregorio and Trumbull, Coach Bubba Trumbull, to Spe do yeah, Speaking of uh, Coach Bubba Trumbull, he's got a few things, Johnny, he's going to have to deal with today. Number one is, is really dealing with the weather. And if you look at what's going on out here, there are little puddles everywhere. You'll see them out in the field. So not only to deal with the weather, establish a running game, and really hustle the ball. But, Johnny, one of the things that he talked a little to you about today, he's not afraid to take chances either. Coach Trumbull is going to go for it if he needs to, weather permitting. 
No, absolutely. The the North is going to be kicking off, and Edmund, it is not going to surprise me if Trumbull goes for the big ticket right off the bat. It's not going to surprise me because, you know what? It's a senior game. On the other side of the ball, we got Joe Gagorio. We're, we're very familiar with Joe and everything. His opportunity today, to, he wants to get to his players, is limit mistakes and execute, establish the running game, and he has a strong linebacking core. Hopefully he can slow down that offense on the other, on the other side of the ball that we talked about. Folks, we're ready to get underway here. The South won the toss. They deferred to the second half, so the North will get the ball, as Johnny had mentioned. And here's the opening kickoff, and it's a short kick, and it's picked up at about the 25. And driven across, and that's number two, Nick Gorman, and he gets to about the 33-yard line where the North will take over first and 10. So if you're a senior and you're playing today, it's your last shot, Edmund, to get that last clip of your high school career on a highlight film. So I look for a lot of big plays right now. You take a look at the backs and receivers, as John had mentioned in the pregame, just a litany of talent, especially come from that SLV team that went to the CCS playoffs and some of the biggins that are going to be on the offensive line. So a lot of key stars, and we'll talk more about them as the day goes on. But this North squad, a lot of talent, a lot of playmakers, and led by their quarterback, Zach Newberry, the lefty. And they're going to, excuse me, the righty. He's going to start with a pass, and that's thrown up in the air. He's got a receiver wide open. That's Gorman across the 35. He's got room. Johnny, you said it right off the gate. They were going to go deep and go deep quickly. Huge play. Hey, they brought the A-team in here tonight, Edmund, to, for this game. And I told you, bubble trouble, he will throw the dice and he will go for it. Again, first play from the line of scrimmage, Newberry. Again, part of 29 touchdown of the SLV, hooks up with number two, uh, Nick Gorman, teammates. And just like that, big chunk of yardage. We're first and 10. And we're about at the 21-yard line. John, they've done that all year long, too. That's nothing new for them. Coach Morris up at SLV has done a great job throughout the years. We've talked about that throughout the season. And he gets a lot of accolades, and deservingly so. A two receivers set to the right, but there's a penalty marker that comes out, and we'll wait for the call. Our head official today is Rudy Berthold, and we'll wait for the official call. And you know, Edmund, we're going to be, we're going to be giving out awards dead ball today. Encroachment on the defense. It's going to be an encroachment penalty against the South. Still first down. And it will be first and five now for the North, and they inch closer to the ball will be spot right about the 11-yard line. And we're going to be giving out awards, like I was saying to him. And right now, here's the defensive starting lineups that you'll see. Uh, again, for the South, the linebacking court, John, that's what we talked about with Sifke and Max Crowley, Miguel Sanchez, Colby Nelson, and then... You look at that defensive line with big Garrett Martin. Diego Rosia, someone to keep an eye out for. Here's the give to Lippert. He goes to the right, breaks tackles, and gets down inside the five, right about the two-yard line. Great job by Lippert. Johnny, again, if they just are in such a rhythm by knowing each other, knowing what they can do, they know the limitations, but just the strength. Absolutely. The familiarity between the, the teammates right here is really an advantage on any combination out there. But right now, i got to give the, uh, the North – uniforms best uniforms right now because that purple side they got a bunch of hodgepodge pants Edmund okay I don't like that white looks crisp right now first and goal at the two DeLuke and Lippert in the backfield and here's the give straight ahead to Lippert he drives forward he's inside the one he's going to be a little bit short of the goal line Sifke as well as big number three Colby Nelson with the stop and again power running John they haven't even used Javier Jones yet number 28 it's just a litany of playmakers a litany Edmund I'll say and litany was, again and that was a great stick by a 55 linebacker take a look at this replay uh, yeah that was on the play that before. was the play before but that's okay and and as they line up to the to the ball right now again it's going to be second and short and it's going to be a keeper by Newberry, and it looks like he's in. Touchdown for the North as Newberry keeps it a few inches out. The North gets on top quickly. John, that's exactly what Coach Trumbull wanted to do. Get <laughs> in that deep backfield as fast as possible, and in a span of four plays, six points. Yeah, minute, minute 39, and Bubba gets his team seven points right there. So I got a feeling we're going to have a lot of scoring here uh, today, Edmund. It's going to be a great, great offensive output. And to kick the extra point will be number 56, Marcos Barranco out of Soquel High School. And he's the lefty. 
as Newberry will look for the spot placement. And for the rules, and that kick is up, and that kick is good. For the rules, there's no rushing on punts or kicks. So that, that's pretty much what you're going to see. You're going to see a lot of those folks, uh, or these players, I should say, be able to move forward. And, John, we talked about the weather. You look around. We saw there was a picture shot there of some of these folks that are braving the weather. It's nice to see so many umbrellas, and it's nice to see so many parents, fans, and friends out here supporting these seniors. No, exactly. The weather wasn't going to uh, keep them away from this, this special game. I couldn't believe how excited I was to get that call that uh, the Lions Club was going to put on this senior bowl. Great idea. Great job. And uh, here we go with the kickoff right now. Coach Gregorio is going to want to get on the, the scoreboard fairly quickly here. Again, look for Zach Sacito, number one, and number five, David Branham from Monta Vista. They'll be returning this kick. And uh, let me tell you, folks, if Bubba Trumbull has anything up his sleeve, kick it away from Sacito because he's been hurting defenses all season long. 10 minutes, 21 seconds here in the first quarter. If you're just joining us, 7-0 is the score in favor of the North Squad against the North Squad uh, consisting of schools of Scotts Valley, San Lorenzo Valley, Soquel, Santa Cruz, and Harbor. And again, this South team, Aptos High School, St. Francis, Monta Vista Christian, Watsonville, and Pajaro Valley. And again, we are here at Cabrillo College, Carl Conley Stadium for the fifth annual Lions Senior Bowl. And that's David Brannon awaiting the kickoff. He's back there with Zach Sacito. Lot of talent, again, great runners for both of these squads. And as the North quickly got on top, the South has, has got to recover. And again, Coach Trammell got to be happy, got to be extremely happy with how things have started. Yeah, Jesse's in purple today. Jesse is, it looks First good time on I've him. ever it seen him. On him. I don't know, I mean, I had an opportunity to talk to him. I told him, I don't think purple's your color, Jesse. <laughs> So here's Barranco, the lefty, with the kick, and that's going to be taken by Cecito. He has to take a step back and takes it across the 20, a little bit of room, and he's going to be tied up at about the 30, call it the 31-yard line, where the South will take over for the first time today. And there's Zach. Cecito didn't get an opportunity to get outside right there, kind of ran right at the wedge, and uh, again, what an exciting player this year. 21 touchdowns. They're back. Scooper, Branham, Brettlinger, Cecito, Rossello. Backs and receivers for the South. Offensive line, Canago, Serrano, Martin, Guthrlet, and Soto. O-line, got to do their work today. Got to do it down in the trenches. Our quarterback's number 14, Josiah Brown. And with Josiah Brown, just that ability to do a lot of trick plays like this right now with Brandon. Brandon trying to get outside the corner. Gets a great block by Brown. Good running room available and gets knocked out of bounds right at midfield. But a great block by Brown on the reverse. Huge pickup for the South. And again, two big plays. He usually, usually you start out, John, with a simple basic run because both teams have about eight running plays. These guys aren't messing around. They're going for the big hey, ones. Hey, strap it on, but Javier Jones gives his Ronnie Lott impersonation. He puts a lick on this one. Let's see if we got this at the end of the play. This is what I love about all-star games. Good backside block by Brown. But comes. as you said, John, boom. Got to <laughs> love that. It's football, baby. So here comes the South, first and 10, inside the 50. And it's the give, it's a fumble, and it's gonna be recovered by the North. And it looked on the first back that went through, he was trying to get it to Cito, and it got slipped up and hit by number five, David Brannon. So after a great play, the North will take over. And, and John, what did you see on that play? It just, it happened so quickly, but unfortunately, just not, it's gonna sustain anything, especially with this North Firecar. Right. I'm not sure if the weather caused that fumble or is it just a miscommunication between quarterback and running back. We might have a replay, we'll check it out. If we do, we'll go back to it. But right now, the North is gonna be taken over, first and 10 from their own 49 yard line. So David Minnie out of Soquel, as well as Nick Lippard are the split backs with Newberry. Newberry is going to throw again, and this time it's in and out of the hands of number two, Nick Gorman. And, and Johnny, let's go back to that play on the turnover. Okay. Here we go, and it was basically, that was going to the up back, number 42, Brettlinger, and he thought it was going to Sacito, so it was just a mix-up in play. Again, the North has that advantage going with the triple head monster in the SLVs, Newberry, Lippard, and Gorman. So therefore, they have a little bit of advantage. It might play out here. It's already got them seven points. Here we go. Second and 10 for the North squad. 
Again, split backfield, two receivers set to the right. And here's the inside handoff to Lippard. And he's taken down by number 31, Max Crowley of the St. Francis Shore. Short gain on the play, and it's going to bring up third and about six. The South in their basic 50 defense with a cover two. Going to keep it simple. Yeah, we're going to see probably a lot of man coverage too. And, and unfortunately, it was the man coverage, and it was number 15, Mitchell Guzman, that just got turned around on that first pass play that the North put together. But... Again, adjustments, adjustments, and Coach Sullivan, Coach Gorio, they will do what they can to make these adjustments for these young men. Yeah, you want to keep them underneath. Forward. Keep them underneath in that cover, too. Third and six for Newberry. And he is going to take a timeout as he didn't like the coverage. It looked like he was had an idea in mind. And again, that's the senior leadership of a guy like Zach Newberry, Johnny. Just able to take a look at a defense, call a timeout. Instead of running a play, he's always looking to say, hey, what's our best opportunity to move forward? Yeah, absolutely. And like we talked about with Coach Morris up there at SLV, just a great organization that they put on up in Felton. Cougar country. Folks, this day in football history, you got to date back to December 18th of 1932, the Chicago Bears being the Portsmouth Spartans. And that was the very first NFL playoff game, final score of 9-0. But again, Portsmouth, John. Portsmouth, a player in the NFL back in 1932. <laughs> first NFL playoff game. God, that's trivial pursuit stuff right there, Edmund. And look where we are now with playoffs. It's yes. just off the hook crazy. So here we go. Back in play, and it's going to be Newberry looking to pass. He had a receiver open, and it is looks to be caught, and they are going to say it is a completion, and that was to number 10, Dakota Lang out of Soquel. So a wobbly pass, a nice job by Lang to pull it in, Johnny. Well, Lang does a great job of getting his arms underneath the ball, and you know what? we got to have awards. I think Dakota Lang, in terms of the best name out here, is good. That's one of my nominees. Oh, that's a movie. Man. Even Bubbo say the same thing. I mean, that's a movie to make out of that name. Dakota Lane. <laughs> Whatever, you know, I like that. Okay, so we got the uniform award going to the south. Name award right now leaning towards uh, the north. Here's the inside handoff to Lukey. He breaks a couple tackles and busts outside across the 30 to about the 27. Good job, John, of keeping your feet. That's one of the things that you and I, we were standing on the sidelines before the game talking to the coaches. That rain's coming down. From our vantage point, also on TV, John, you can see the puddles that are starting to form in the field. So footwork is going to be an issue. But thank goodness for an all-purpose field here at Cabrillo. Well, Edmund, let's go to the other side of the coin. It's wet. It's, it's raining. Those white uniforms are going to stay white all day. Got to tell you, I miss the mud. You want a mud bowl, don't you? Come on. <laughs> Why not? First and 10 for the north at the 26-yard line. And it's going to be a three-receiver set this time for number eight, Zach Newberry. Newberry looking over the defense, again, in their basic 50 set. Newberry looking. He's going to go to the right side, and again, in and out of the hands. A great pass this time by Newberry. Probably his best pass of the day. Good zip on it. Just couldn't hold on was number 10, Dakota Lang, after making a good pickup on a wobbly pass. Just couldn't hold on to this one, John. Now, Dakota... Now, Dakota... You know, to get nominated for your best name, Edmund, you got to make some plays, too. Yes, you do. you okay, got to back so, it up. So Dakota started off good, but he just dropped that pass, so he needs some redemption later on will. in this game. Okay, and he will. Split backfield, Deluki and Javier Jones of Soquel in the game. It's the inside handoff to Deluki. Breaks a tackle. Good hole burst on the left side across the 20 to the 17-yard line. Nice look. that's a gain of nine, so it's going to be third and a short one. Nice looky by Deluki. Great job using his, his blockers. Again, the ability that you have just to, it's, it's name recognition. It's A-team. It really it's a, is. It's A-team <laughs> stuff. It, you're right. amazing. <laughs> so it'll be third and short. DeLuki will come to the sideline, and there you look at the South D, needing a big stop right here to force a fourth down. Yeah, Gutherlet, Martin, Rossello, out linebackers Crowley and Sanchez, and in the middle you have Sifke and Nelson. Colby Nelson, Jacob Sifke. And here's the give to Jones, and he's going to scoot forward across the 15 to the 14. First down for the north. John, that's tough. You get Lippert. Then you have DeLuki coming yeah. at you. Then you have Javier Jones. That doesn't include a guy like David Miney. There's so many weapons on this team. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what they're doing? They're putting a 
could together a great drive grinding this one out. The first one, like we said, was scored in a, what, a buck, buck 39? And this one's just grinding it out. And the D-line and the backers are going to have to do the job right now for the South to uh, uh, try to stop them from getting into the end zone. Here's the give this time to Lippert going to his right. Breaks a tackle, spins around, and gets inside the 10. Great job by Lippert. He's down at the 8-yard line. A gain of 6 on the play, but a great spin move, John. And he's just a versatile back. Yeah, it was a great spin move right off first contact. We call that SOFO, spin off first obstacle, Amazing. SOFO. Amazing. Got that, people, S-O-F-O. -O. Teach that to your running backs. Also works on the basketball court, SOFO. Spin off first offender. Best color guy in the business, folks, without, oh, yeah. without a doubt. 6.38 here in the first quarter. It'll be second. They're going to call it five, so a five-yard gain for Lippert. And the North looking to knock on the door once again. And the ball is, is scooted loose by Zach Newberry. He's going to pick it up. He's going to have nowhere to go. He's going to lose a couple yards on the play back past the 10. But a good job quickly of Newberry, John, just jumping on. And again, it's, it's a tough go today with the weather, and especially with how slick, cold, and wet it is out there. And there he is. It mishandled on the ball. Newberry tries to take, make nothing out of uh, a broken play and can't do it. Good swarming defense by the South. Okay, big third down here, Edmund. Big third down for the South. What are you going to do? Are you going to sit back and, and uh, let them pass on you? You're going to bring the heat. Well, you have very little field to work with, so it's advantage for the South. So I'm hoping that they bring the pressure and allow these guys to go one-on-one. -on -one. you got good defensive backs, and they're going to roll to the right. And here's a float pass. It's up in the air, oh. in and out of the hands. It was number 14 on the play for the South. That's Josiah Brown. Josiah Brown, who looked like he got a finger on it, but they just couldn't get it in and out of the hands. Uh, DeLuki was the receiver on the play, and it's going to be fourth down and seven, and we will see if they go for the field goal or if they're going to go for it. And more than likely, since they're outside of the 10, they may just try on fourth and seven, see if they can't pound it through. And so, yeah, you're right, Evan. Here they go. They're going to go for it, and I like this call by Jesse Bubba Trumple, head coach of the... North, here we go, fourth and seven. Two receiver set, Newberry's looking for Fossum, he's gonna float one up in the air, it's up for grabs, and it's in now, the hand's kicked and knocked out of bounds. So Josiah Brown doing a great job against number 18, Brock Fossum, as they went up for an alley-oop, and the winner on that battle, quarterback, defensive back, Josiah Brown. Oh, watch Brown, folks, this is, he, they do a fade pattern and Brown reads it right from the get-go and all he does is he's gonna try to uh, intercept it or pat it down, but no way that ball was getting in on that fade pattern. Great good. job, Josiah, Josiah Brown. Great position to block yeah, out his man, Good too. job, screened him out. So the South will take over with their second possession looking for their third play. And with 532, as you might remember, the South started out on a reverse Huge gain on the play of over 20 yards and a fumble on their very next play as it was a mix-up by quarterback Brown between Brentlinger as well as Sacito. So once again, they're going to go with an offset eye, and it's going to be Sacito as well as Brentlinger in the background. Now, Edmund, it's very important for the South to establish a running game. They have Brettlinger and Sacito in that backfield, and the people like Canego, Serrano, Martin, and Soto, Guthrie up front have got to do their job. And here's Sacito on the pitch, and Johnny, he breaks a couple tackles, gets across the 15-yard line, little past the 16, so it's a gain of five, and it'll bring up second and five. As Sacito picks up where he left off, Johnny, the last time that we had a chance to talk about Zach Sacito, as you see the replay here, he had that bad knee, but he's recovered quickly, already playing basketball and doing quite well for the Sharks. Yeah, absolutely. Zach has had a stellar career at St. Francis, and he's uh, capping it off. Moves from the football field to the basketball court last night with a victory over uh, Monta Vista. And here they are. With, he's in the backfield with Brettlinger. Here's Cicito again. Breaks outside the 25. He's got some room to run, but a good job of getting flagged back down as the defender number 31, Zane Prinella, just chasing Cicito from behind, but not after a huge gain for Cicito across the 35 to the 37 yard line, where it's first and 10 
for the South. Well, his nickname was Lightning during the year, and that's what he shows right there. He'll zap an offense, and he'll make it go. He does a great job of reading the hole. If there's nothing there, he jams right, and there he's using his blocker right there. Nice pickup from behind by Zane Prunella from SLV to pick him up, or Zach would have gotten more yardage. Here's the inside handoff to Brentler as he motors forward across the 40. He'll get just across the 41, so it'll be a gain of about four on the play. Bring up second and six. You gotta love these fans, by the way, John. Yeah, absolutely, there they are. They're all covered up with their nice umbrellas, having a great time watching their family members, boyfriends, whatever. They're out here, and it's great to see it. Great looking field, great camera work going on right now, too. Excellent job. Great job. Just over four minutes here in the first quarter. Here's the handoff to Cecito. He busts outside, gets across the 45, and is stood up right at the 47-yard line. And it will bring up third and short for the Sharks. John, what I've noticed about all these runners, and, and it's so impressive, their feet are always moving forward first. There's no hesitation. They're going to move forward, and so many of them. You have Brentlinger, who's a power runner. You have Cecito for the South that really can shift on a dime. And yeah, it's something that I know Coach trummel has got to worry about, saying, okay, you know, what's the best way to stop these guys? Well, that's running back school 101. Keep those knees pumping. And that's what these do. And then if you throw a little sofa on that, you got the you got the legs pumping and you're spinning off the first object in front of you. Well, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a very good run. Third and six here for the South. A big third down play. I mean, I've said it's it. Actually, actually third short. Third, third and short. Excuse me. And a timeout is called on the field by the South, so Coach Gregorio is gonna talk it over with his group on this very important short yardage situation, third and less than a yard with 3.44 here in the first quarter. John, tell me, you have this, the Senior Bowl that generally takes place, and usually it's schools from the Palo Alto area that take on the Santa Cruz County. We'll get right back to that point. This winter on CTV Sports, girls and boys basketball, folks, Stay with us because you have a lot of great games coming up. The first one's going to take place on January the 16th, Scotts Valley against SLV. Also, soccer to look forward to, Paro Valley and Wattsville. Two great soccer programs that battle once again. And wrestling, going to be there right in the SCCAL Championship back the latter part of February. Folks, I'm telling you, you want to tune in on February 27th to check out high school wrestling around this county. We feature some of the best wrestlers, and probably you've never gone to a wrestling match. Tune in to CTV because you will be simply amazed at the energy at this event. Josiah Brown takes the keeper. He'll get the first down for the south at the 49-yard line, and it'll be a fresh set of downs for Joe Gregorio and his squad as they look to tie this game up at seven. I look at Bubba. He looks like a football coach. He does. I mean, you know, he's not going to be coaching a chess match at Harvard. He's a football coach at Santa Cruz High School. Jesse Pour Bubba Trumbull. Pouring down rain, no jacket, in shorts. That, that's a coach for you right there. Yeah. 3.31 here in the first quarter. 7-0 is a score like in favor of the North. And Brown's going to pass for the first time. He's under some pressure. He's going to roll and look, and he's got nowhere to go. Great job of pressure by the front line. On the sack is Josh Velez out of Scotts Valley. But all types of pressure coming against Josiah Brown, and it's going to be a loss all the way back to the 42-yard line. Nice pursuit by Velez. I mean... Josiah Brown's not slow, and Velez caught him from behind, so great job, Josh. So it'll bring up second down and 17 now for the South. And it'll be a bevy of new players coming in, including number 82, Marco Sambrano of Aptos, who'll come in as a wide receiver. So I formation set, and here's the give, and moving forward and trying to move the pile as flags come down. But that was taken, the handoff, by number nine, Miguel Sanchez, but we'll wait for the penalty call. And that D-line is working great for the North right now. Let's go through it. You have Jordan Roberts, Cheyenne Event, Michael Shuey, outside linebackers, Than Prunella, Nick White, Russell Parker, and Matt Dietz. It's a procedure call against the South, so they will... We'll wait to see if the North decides. It looks like Coach Trummel wants to decline the penalty and take the short down, which would bring up third and long. And it looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. On the offense, that's declined. It's going to bring up third down. 
Well, third and long here for the for the South right now. They're in a tough predicament right now as they didn't have a lot of opportunity to practice third and long plays. You can't really put it on the ground, Edmund. They need to get to their opponent's 43-yard line. So here's play action pass. Brown looking across the middle. Oh! Great hands by Brentlinger. He breaks the tackle, gets across. Johnny, first down for the South. What a great call, but what a terrific catch by Brentlinger. That's all JB right there, Edmund. What a what a one-handed catch right there. And Brettlinger came up big with the play. He was led a little bit too much by Brown, but Brettlinger got the stop on it, gathered control, and went for a big first down play for the uh, South. Great job, guys. And again, that's your connection, Josiah Brown, to his teammate, Justin Brettlinger, the Aptos Mariners. So at the 37-yard line, I formation once again. And here's the give to Cecito. He finds a hole, gets across the 35 to the 32-yard line. Gain of five on the play for Cecito. With just under two minutes and running here in the first quarter. So uh, successful, but with this drive, if they end up scoring on this one, you can hand the ball to Justin Brettlinger on this one. Great job. I and mean, what a great kid this guy had. Great year for Aptos High under Coach Randy Blankenship, who did a great job with the runners. So here's the inside handoff, as John had mentioned to Brentlinger, but he is stuffed and nowhere to go. A great job on the play by, a, by two great hitters for the North, number 31. Zane Prinella, and also number 12, Nick White. Now here, you get a chance to look at these uniforms. We got a nice white outfit by the North, I mean by the South right there. But you go on the other side of the, the, the school, and you got Barney the Purple Dinosaur, and they're purple. They got the gold helmets, and they got the multicolored pants, and they got stickers all over their helmets. So the award's going to the South on this one, Edmund, and this is the last thing I'm going to say on it. Look at Cecito reverse that ball. And he's got room him. to run. Cecito, but oh. great job of getting knocked. That was by number 50. We'll wait and see if they get the first down. It looks like Cecito will get it. A great individual effort by Cecito, but it was Michael Shuey that comes up with a big hit from behind. But what a great individual effort. He ran 40 yards to gain five. Well, he was called Lightning, and Lightning didn't like it coming over to the right side. Now he turns and goes the other direction to the left, but a nice hit by uh, number 50. Michael Shuey Michael from Santa Cruz puts a little lead to that hit. So a first down for the South at the 30, excuse me, 26 yard line with 31 seconds. This could be the last play of the first quarter. And it's the inside handoff to Brentlinger and he pile drives to about the 21 yard line for a gain of five. And that should do it, John, for the first quarter. Good work by M Michael Gutherlet. On the uh, offensive line, Kentucky, Garrett Morris from, Garrett Martin from St. Francis, and uh, Diego Rossello. Great job. So, folks, that'll do it for the first quarter as the South looking to get on the board, looking to tie this game up or at least get close. It is 7-0 in favor of the North scoring on their first possession. And we will look to more action here in the second quarter.